All right, is everyone here for the off-road walk around 3 p.m. English? Is it unlocked? <laughs> okay, so this is a 20-minute walk around. It's very quick, we've got quite a large showroom. Uh, basically, what I will do is I will highlight some of the accessories we have here. Um, I won't go into any great depth, but uh, please feel free to come and see us after the show, and then I can specifically get into some questions that you have on it. Uh, and uh, we can uh, we can go further with that. Uh, we're going to start basically here, work our way kind of around the showroom. So yes, I do. You will have to follow me, and I ask you to try to uh, keep up with it. I will just start talking kind of when I get to the next vehicle. So uh, we got a good speaker system here. Hopefully, you'll be able to uh, to hear everything. So I'm going to start over here on this model and just show you one of the accessories that we launched in June that not many of you may have had a chance to have seen. And this is the bed rail for the uh, the long bed. Uh, this bed rail basically um, is kind of inspired by a, uh, you know, the 53 foot flatbeds we see going down the highway. We know that these sides come off of these boxes here. So when you remove those sides, uh, basically this bed rail becomes super functional for straps, uh, strapping anything down on the, uh, on the bed. I'm not sure if it's bolted in or not. Al is going to go here and uh, give us a demonstration. Um, it's got little locator pins here so that when you do put a tie down on it to hold the item that you have. Uh, in place, basically, it prevents it from sliding along. And uh, as well, it is sized perfectly so that when you add our fender flare extension kit, they will, they will fall just short of the edge here. And in that way, if you bump into trees or any type of thing on the side, you're not tearing off your fender flares. They're nice and protected by this, uh, by this bar. And even when the side is up, as long as your cargo is higher than the wall, if you still put the straps across, it will hold the, it will hold the product down. So. It's not that it's just specific to the uh, flatbed mentality. It does work very well, as I said, to hold cargo that's high or to be used as kind of a body side protector. So we'll move to the next vehicle over here, which again is a long bed model. Any of you who've just uh, witnessed my t one of my two What's New sessions, I highlight the fact that we're really trying to showcase the capability of this box and how with pack you can really accessorize it for whatever specific function you may have. Inside the box, there's the dimple patterns, and we see here that we've included a couple of uh, link bases. So this box here is securely attached at the back by putting those link bases and choosing a 16-inch link accessory uh, on this platform. Now, to familiarize yourself with this box and, uh, and, and the accessories, we've got all these accessories here on the table, and you can come and install them on the box, and we, gotta, we have a game going if you want to get involved. But if you just want to come and try them too, feel free just to get familiar with them. And that's the goal of this, uh, of this model being here. This is uh, kind of a highlight accessory we got at this show. This is the um, hanging storage box kit. Uh, basically, Can-Am milk crates. So we have specific milk crates. These are available separately. So you can put a few of these together. And like I mentioned in my What's New, you can put gardening tools in one, uh, husband can put the fishing stuff in the other, uh, whatever you need, specific welding, welding equipment in the other. Um, it's held in here by a rubber strap, so it's not going to go anywhere where you're riding. I did say it was off-road approved. And if you notice, it also sits a little bit off the floor here, even more so on a uh, short bed defender that has a slightly higher uh, bed wall to it. But it basically allows rain to pass through and snow and stuff. When, uh, when I was doing a tour and kind of investigating how we go about it, you know, accessorizing these units, I happened upon Arkansas uh, and landed in a snowstorm. And the next day when I started visiting all the farmers, they all had chains in the back of the boxes, but they were all frozen, you know, to the ground. And, and this would be a great location to keep some chains in and stuff. And all the water and mud will shake off as it, as it drives and it'll just fall through for the bottom. Um, this has 12 different positions on this box. I'm just going to let the microphone go. Okay, Alan's going to come. And it's as easy as this, just changing it in its position. So if I'm, uh, if I'm driving, you know, kind of... Uh, from uh, fence post to fence post, just keeping an eye on it, and I want to add some straps or something. I keep all of that, you know, in here uh, located. And if I got to drive back and I got to go through some tight woods, I'll just put it back inside the box. And when I accessorize the box with other accessories, I have many locations where I can decide to to put this. So, kind of like I said, it's my word. It's the nifty accessory of uh, of the show. I'm um, sure Alan's gonna show here. So this is our gun and tool holder. Okay, sorry, I was wondering why he was positioning it like that. So inside, there's five locations, and there you put your gun stocks in it. This is a rubberized floor, so it really helps to locate where, where your gun is going to go. 
And as well, if you're using tools, well, it keeps the, uh, it keeps the butt of the tool in the, in the proper location. Uh, it attaches to the side of the vehicle. Um, we do have two straps that really uh, strengthen it and keep it to the side because it just could have a bit of movement in it if it's fully loaded with, uh, with five accessories. It's just got a rubberized strap here, so you place your, you place your uh, broom or your rake or your gun in here, and then you just come down and lock it in place. That wouldn't happen if you had the straps on. Just like that. So that is why we do it. And again, it's multi-position, so it has several positions on the outside of the vehicle. It can go inside the bed wall, and it can also go up against the end of the bed, so kind of the headache rack position, we'll call it. Okay? So I think we will continue on this way, and we're going to move all the way over two, three vehicles to the Defender that has the ProVent windshield. All right, thank you for joining me up here at the, uh, this Defender. So what we're showcasing here on this model is the ProVent windshield. Um, a, lot of a lot of the specifications I talk about apply to all the windshields. So this is polycarbonate, hard-coated windshield. The windshield and the venting system, they come like this. This is not something that you cut out and add in. You buy the windshield with the vents installed. Uh, the Defender model does happen to have two lower vents where the rest of the models only have one vent in the center section. Uh, the lower vent is used uh, basically in a defog position to let air in. It sends air up against the windshield here, so on a humid day, it will help defog. On a day that's not humid, it's basically sending the air up here, which will rotate and start freshening the air in the cab. Um, and then the uh, upper vent here has a, a closed position, so does this one, um, and an open position that's more infinitely adjustable, both in its horizontal, in its vertical plane, and then also horizontally, but something fun is that the driver and the passenger each have the control over kind of where they want to pinpoint the air going in. So that's, that's real fun too, that each person can direct, direct the air exactly where they need it. So if a, if a wife is a shorter than the husband, well, they're not having to share a compromise of the air going through. Um, <clears throat> so Alan's showing here, there's a pre-filter material that comes, uh, comes with these vents. And it does a fantastic job of pre-filtering water and air. But this design system here basically has a false floor in it. And water that does go through here, and it will, was specially designed to drip out of the center right here so that there's no water that falls on anyone's lap or inside the, inside the vehicle. So that's a pretty unique uh, feature, very innovative for the, uh, for the vent. We do have some service kit foam. So for any type of big particle air that you want to pre-filter in advance and just to give you more kind of lifespan on these, you can add them. But they're not required and more filtration comes from these than they do from the, uh, the foam section. Um, to continue along the story of the venting, we have these side wind deflectors here on the vehicle. Um, air will hit here in this position and send the air around the vehicle. So all of that wraparound air that you kind of get to com coming into the cab when it's cold, well, that doesn't happen when you have these on and it's in this position. And say that throughout the day between the the morning time and working to wait a warm midday and then back down to cooler temperatures. You can really adjust these to bringing in how much air you want, exactly where it's directed to the passengers. And then again, if you start off early in the morning and you've got kind of a dewy windshield, well, you just turn it to this position and it'll send air to the windshield and help defog it as well. You start putting these in concert together and you're getting some pretty aggressive ventilation as well as defogging functions. So this is the kit and the model for the Defender. Uh, we will go down a couple of vehicles. I'll showcase it to you on the X3, as well as some other accessories. As we walk through, I would like you to take a look at our winter accessories. We've got our ProMount plow system here on the side. We've got a different track setups up here on the display. We've got our Backcountry LT based on this uh, X3 Max. This is a snow beast right here that we're looking at. but. Uh, I'll come, I'll come forward so that we don't have a lot of time, and I'd really like to highlight a lot of the things being launched here at Club.
So through this walk around, unfortunately with the time, I'm not allowed, I can't get in depth on the accessories as I mentioned before. We have many of our partners here uh, around this area. So uh, when I do showcase something and you have more questions that you'd like to ask on it, feel free after the walk around to go and investigate a little further. So this is our S3 for Can-Am front bumper on the X3. Um, it allows a winch to get installed. It's one of the three offers we have now for winch installation on bumpers. It's got a higher hook holder and it really, really looks good, fills out the front of the vehicle. Over here, we have the uh, Pro Vent windshield for the X3. Again, we noticed the two vents on it. Now this is a, this model and the Maverick Trail and Sport only use one lower vent uh, on it, but still great efficiency in the system. We notice here on the back, one of our partners beside us here, s and uh, Particle Separator. So if you'd like to learn a bit more about the technology and give it a try, they have a, uh, a demo set up right over here. And if we move to the back of the vehicle, we'll see that uh, rear combination of the S3 for Can-Am bumper filling out the rear of this vehicle. So it's got a, it's got a, in, a place to install a rear winch on it, and there's also a pull plate style mount at the bottom. Gotcha. <laughs> Feel free again to come and, and ask questions to the guys. Unfortunately, the walk arounds don't allow enough time to investigate deeply. Um, moving over to this vehicle. <clears throat> this vehicle is equipped uh, mostly with uh, Lone Star Racing accessories. So um, from the front bumper to the roof, to rock sliders to the rear intrusion bar. I mean, it is well packed. Um, the light bar as well. Uh, can't see where the guys are at, but there they are. So Dan and Brian are over there. Please feel free to, uh, to talk to them. And then on the rear of this vehicle, uh, we launched this in June. We've got the new Yoshimura uh, rear exhaust system. So it's changed quite a bit from the previous model, uh, the way we stack the pipes and the way we, uh, we finish off the exhaust system. A lot more exposed and um, again, I don't think we can run it here unfortunately, but we, do we have a sound bite? Did we get the sound bite? No? Oh, we've got a good comment. Would you like to? <laughs> Customer says that it's a McLaren that exists. Oh, it's got, so that, that's high praise for us. I think those are, those are well-respected machines and they're pretty quick. So. Uh, that's nice, but it's, it, it's got a great sound to it. So we will move over, sorry, to the next vehicle here. And on this vehicle, I get to continue the uh, ProVent system by showcasing the roof module. Now this uh, roof module here uh, takes in a lot of fresh air. It's wider than the box, so it feeds it in and, and starts creating velocity in it. And inside it's the box that has the four directional vents where I say you can really kind of pinpoint it towards yourself or distribute new fresh air in here. Now, um, certainly with a cab system, this works incredibly well. I've had a chance to feel it with a cab system and when you open up the vents, it's drastic to change. Um, of course, if you're riding with the open windows, it's not as strong, but all you need to do is put your hand against the vents, you'll feel the pressure and you understand that you're bringing in all that fresh air and you're pushing out and, and working against all that hot stuffy air that's trying to come in the cab. So it's a, it's a real nice difference. It's just, it's easier to expose on a, on a cab system or someone who's really put a lot of accessories that block, you know, the air up around the vehicle. So we're moving to the orange XRC. This vehicle is equipped with our new rad relocator, a beautiful system. Um, again, three main benefits from it. In the mud, it takes the rad up high. It prevents it from getting clogged with mud. Um, being behind the cab area, in the hot southwest or anywhere it's, it's hot, it basically prevents the hot air you know, coming out of the radiator and into the cab area. And then thirdly, it places it up in a nicely secure portion. We know that the front of the vehicle, it doesn't matter any front of any vehicle, is the most exposed and at risk portion of a vehicle. So in high performance or desert riding, if there is a bad luck, there's a good chance that's where it's gonna happen. This will be able to get you home. Um, on top of here, we have our new X3 audio roof. Uh, you see the lights here around the speakers all lit up. Um, four four eight-inch speakers in there, 800 watts power. Uh, it's got a um, 2.7 inch uh, screen on the receiver. And what's really cool is not all, the, not all the competitive audio roofs allow a driver or a passenger to make that adjustment. They focus and turn it towards the driver. Well, this one here, it fits on both sides. The team, from, the team from Rockford is here. We do have a demo version over there. And, <laughs> and I, I advise you to go and play it, not while I'm doing my walk around, please.
but afterwards, uh, go and meet the guys. They know so much more than I do about this technology and, and how to make this system really play super well, so I invite you to do that. Okay, we're going to uh, move over to the uh, Maverick Trail and Sport models. Yes. There are, there are some limitations with the Rad uh, Relocator for accessories, unfortunately. The cooler does fit on the back, but there is quite a significant... There's no, unfortunately, there's quite a significant incompatibility with many rear accessories, yeah. We figure the heart, we figure kind of the performance-oriented guy is going to start to think about how he wants to build that and make judicious decisions on his accessories. So this Maverick Sport Max over here is equipped front and rear with the S3 for Can-Am mud bumpers. And uh, I invite you to take a look. I really think they fill out the rear of the vehicle. They do also protect the, uh, the rear shock area which is uh, slightly more exposed on this vehicle than on uh, some of our other models. We've got some new lights up front on it. We see that the hook is put in the, uh, the, the hook holder at the higher location. And I'm gonna peter off the presentation at this point. We do have the power flip windshield that was introduced uh, last year for the uh, for the uh, uh, trail and sport model. So if you're not familiar with it, please come take a look at it. And um, if, if not, well, that's it. And I thank you very much for the walk around.